welcome back to Baseline Farms. My name is Jade. So much has been happening on the farm. Uh, we're still decorating for Halloween. Matter of fact, they were just out over the weekend doing that. And we've just been busy working, working on the farm, um, you know, working at work. <laughs> and the weather has been so nice. It's been probably in the 70s, but yet today, is actually kind of warm. Today is about in the 80s and I feel so bad for Bella because Bella's winter coat is coming in. And usually around now it kind of does get a little cooler and in the morning times it is nice and cool in the evening times it's, it has been cooling down quite a bit. But, um, but not that much, you know, like last night I think it was down to maybe the 70s, maybe high 60s. So it's still pretty darn um, warm out and we did have a bit of a cold spell for a minute there and it, where it started to rain um, which was kind of unexpected because it was not in the forecast so um, and then John brought home a dog so a dog was at the job sites at the parks and stayed with the crew the whole time and so they brought it home so now we have this stray dog it's a border collie and he's super sweet. We don't know his name, so I'm gonna take him out to the animal shelter to get to see if he has a microchip or not because he's so smart. And um, and yeah, I, I don't know if someone just dumped the dog off there or, because it happens, or if it lost its owner. So we're gonna see if it has a microchip, but he's so sweet. The only thing is that when we ask him to come, um, he cowards down. And that's all, he comes, but his he's, it looks, He's very timid when he does it. So hopefully he wasn't abused. Um, and if so, that's really sad. So I'm gonna take him to the animal shelter just to see if he has a microchip because he rides on the back of a quad. So I was riding the quad around the property because we have this little quad and he jumped onto the back of it. So that's kind of cool. And in order to teach a dog that, that takes a lot of time. So. Hopefully, um, hopefully he does have a microchip, and if not, then we just got a new dog because he's so sweet, and he gets along really well with Hank, so Hank is such a sweet boy. Okay, so today I have amended the bed. I have added drip, seven, I have seven rows of drip in this bed, and I'm gonna start some garlic, some more garlic. Now, I already started some garlic in a small little bed, and then I started some garlic where the eggplant's at, but I'm gonna do two rows of garlic, well, however much garlic is in this clove. And this clove is just organic garlic uh, because I've been calling around to see, because I ran out of the cloves that um, I used in the garden beds. So last year I went to the nursery, I bought some heads of garlic like this, it was, came in a package, and then I grew a whole bunch of it and I kept the best ones to put back in the garden. Well, I since ran out, of the garlic, I grew the, the best cloves that I had that I kept, and I wanted to plant more because it was so delicious and it was so easy to grow. So I've decided I'm gonna do this organic garlic to see if it grows. I'm gonna do two rows. I'm gonna do some carrots on the outside, and then I'm gonna do um, some spinach here on the inside. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that since it's kind of warm out. Um, I picked the brightest day to do this, but you know, I was trying to get a bunch of chores done and over the weekend we just kind of took it easy and and just took it easy, really didn't do much of anything, just kind of decorated and cleaned up and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go, go ahead and get started, see how many cloves we can plant in this um, garden bed of garlic, get some carrots and spinach in and I'll show you what I'm going to be planting. Okay, so this one's obviously the organic garlic and... So I'm gonna save these two front rows. I'll show you where I'm planting them. I'm gonna save these two rows for the spinach and I'm gonna go ahead and pop the garlic over here. I might just have one row of garlic because there's not that much. Look at this kitty. Okay, buddy, come on, come on. Unless you could dig, time for you to get out. So what you're gonna do is, I know I showed this in other videos and I should just leave the hole there so we know what we planted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick the garlic just like that. And this is so easy. Here I did it again. I have to keep the hole open so I know if I planted garlic there or not. Cause if I don't, um, I've had times where I forgot where I planted the garlic and disrupted it. So there you go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover these. 
I'm probably only gonna get one row of garlic, so that's all right. I'll save another row for, I'll get some more garlic later and plant it. God, not even one row. Darn it. Oh, shoot, that was it. <laughs> All right. So that's that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these two markers right here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this little area right here because this is where I planted the garlic and that's how much garlic I had not that very much in that little garlic head. Oh my goodness, this kitty. Let me grab. Let me grab him real fast. Come on, buddy. Come on. Okay. Nope. Nope. No. 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 -uh. No. No. Okay. There we go. Okay, now for the spinach. So the spinach that I am using is a burpees variety. Gosh, you guys, it is getting so warm out here. I wanna see, it's like noon time. So this is the spinach variety that I'm using. And this one I could, I could uh, plant in the soil from August through November. So that's good. And this is a 40 to 48 day harvest. So let's just go ahead and start planting these. And let me just show you the carrots that I'm gonna be planting. And then I'm gonna pop in some music and then quickly plant these carrots. So I have these kaleidoscope carrots, which I know I planted these last year and they're so delicious. And they're just so fun to have, these different colored. And these um, are 75 to 80 day harvest. And then I have another one Oh, and that's by Burpees. And then this one is by, um, what is the name of this company? Fairy Morse. And these are the Rainbow Mix right here. And this one is, let's see, 67 day harvesting date. So in 67 days, we'll be harvesting some carrots. Isn't that crazy? Just two months. And so let's just go ahead and get started on planting these. I have my tags all ready to go. And uh, let's just start planting. Cannot wait to get some of these carrots and garlic again. Okay. All right, so I was gonna show you how I was planting everything and then I forgot to hit record, so I'm all done planting. It didn't take long at all. So I ended up only able to plant, I was only able to plant um, half a row of garlic. So I was able to plant garlic right over here and I do have the drip running now, but I am gonna um, water it down just a little bit. So I was able to plant garlic up to here. So I still have this row that I could plant in and a little bit more on this end. So I am gonna still plant garlic. And then I did add the spinach into both these rows and I added some carrots and then I ran out of the kaleidoscope carrots. So I had these burpee, these orange carrots and let me show you the Denver carrots I think they're called so I did a little section at the very end of these burpees Denver carrots so I cannot wait and this one is a 75 day harvest so I cannot wait to harvest these it doesn't sound like we're gonna be getting these um, for Thanksgiving since we are in the second third week of October and some of these carrots are a 60, 67 day harvest and a 75 to 80 day harvest. So it's all right. I mean, I do have some leftover carrots from still last year. So we'll, we could probably use that in stuffing and things like that. But my goal is to eventually figure out when to plant everything so that by the time Thanksgiving comes, I could have a whole bunch of stuff to, um, to use like butternut squash and potatoes and things like that. And right now, um, I do not have any butternut squash. And I did harvest all the potatoes and I have since eaten them all. Matter of fact, we just, lo we just used the last batch of the potatoes that I grew in the garden um, for some shepherd's pie last night. So that was so delicious. But that is pretty much done. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's pretty easy, easy peasy. Now, 
I am going to put um, some netting over this because it has been my experience that every time I plant some seeds, if uh, you don't put any netting on the top of it, some critters get to them. So either some rodents or birds. I think it's birds because I've seen plenty of birds in here. And the cat likes to hang out in here, so I don't think we get that many mice. And I don't see any mice droppings or anything like that anywhere in the garden beds. So my idea is birds because I've seen them with my own eyes. <laughs> but that is what's happening. So now let me show you this dog that John brought home. So stinking cute. I have to say though, um, I did say a command. Um, the command, the same command that we use on our dog. Come on, buddy. On Hank. And that is to corral the chickens or to get the horse back in her stall. Come on. Let's go. And um, when I said it, and it's, yup, I said yup, because that's what works on our dog. And when I said it, the dog killed the chicken. Come on, bud, let's go. I couldn't even believe it. It happened so fast, right before our eyes. Um, I was telling our dog, you know, to go and corral the chickens, and I said the word, and he literally ran, and just like that. So I don't think it was his fault. I think it was my fault for saying it but we have lost two chickens one of them I don't know what happened we just found her in the chicken coop and then this guy took out the other one and then all of my chickens are molting right now hey ladies so they're not looking so pretty but I was so bummed out because the chicken that he took out was like a super sweet one but yeah the little white one over there that there's a white one right over there by Bella she's molting and there's a few of them so they're not looking too hot right now but that's okay all right so this is the puppy oh look at this little guy come here little guy look how cute he is come here Where's, doesn't he look so skittish look at this oh look at that he looks so scared I don't know I don't know, it's so sad, you know, when they're when they're this skittish to try to find their owners. It really is. Right, buddy? He's so stinking sweet. Look at that. Look how sweet he is. And he just jumps right into the car. Oh my goodness. He'll just jump right in the car, jumps right onto the back of the quad. Has no problem. And he has no problem staying on it either. So he obviously was some sort of herding dog. But he's so scared and timid. And I asked him to come to me. I have some splinters in my hand come on buddy so we're gonna go and check to see if he has a microchip and um worst case scenario he does not have a microchip and then we get to keep him <laughs> or that's best case scenario but right buddy look at him he's so cute and we're still trying to figure out a name for him if we do get to keep him um john came up with the name of flash i like milo or otis because after that um there was a show, not a show, a movie that my daughter used to like, Milo and Otis. And it was like what the dog and the cat and they took an adventure and stuff like that. So I think that that would be a per perfect name for him. And uh, yeah, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see if he has a microchip or not. So I'm going to take him to the vet and then I'll give you an update to see how he's doing. And then I'll give you an update as to how the farm is doing and what is happening. And look at our decorations. I know it doesn't look like much, but we did add a few more things. And we have cleaned out the barn. And so, oh my goodness, it is going to be so much fun. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.